What if you were told you had to continue paying your car maker even after you already paid off your car? Not many Americans know this yet, but major car companies are starting to operate more like high tech companies. Today we're looking at car companies offering on-demand subscription services for common car features. But is this a good thing for consumers? We'll also see how Americans are pushing back. But why major car companies like GM, Tesla, and BMW are still enforcing new subscription plans, with even bigger plans to expand the strategy in Horizon, and how this will make or break the car industry. Traditionally, we're all accustomed to just paying the purchase price when we buy a car. But Americans are keeping their cars longer than we used to. The average American keeps his car for 12 years before it switches to another one. Plus, when you consider that modern cars have more electronics and software than ever before, basically modern cars are computers on wheels. That's why major car brands are looking to revamp their revenue models by offering subscription services for common car features. Just look at BMW. They're now selling subscriptions to heat your front seats. It's 18 bucks if you want to pay monthly. Alternative owners have the option to subscribe for a year for 180 bucks or three years for 300 or they can just pay for unlimited access for 415 dollars in case you didn't read between the lines this means that new bmws come with all components for heated seats but the bmw software for that functionality comes locked unless you pay to activate it obviously this applies only to bmws where the subscription service is available actually not many people know this but bmw has been putting subscription based car features on since 2020 right now the heated seat subscriptions are available in BMW's digital stores in select countries like South Korea, Germany, the UK, South Africa, and New Zealand. It's not yet available here in the U.S. In fact, BMW recently released a statement saying that they will not offer heated seats on a subscription basis in the United States. If you're wondering why, well, based on analysis, BMW expects U.S. consumers to opt out of the subscription more often than not. But there are other BMW subscription features available here in North America, like the remote start function. This feature in enables you to start your engine from a distance away so the cars can warm up. Another subscription-based feature is the BMW Drive Recorder that uses the car's external cameras to record. Suffice to say, hackers are already on it. In fact, some owners hate the system so much that they're resorting to specialized companies which, for a one-time fee, will unlock certain software lock features. For example, there are a few companies in the UK that say they can unlock features for under 50 bucks. But how do Americans really feel about this? Here's a huge irony. The general concept of monthly subscription for services is nothing new. Take smartphones, for example. Believe it or not, 10 years ago, only 31% of Americans owned smartphones. But today, 85% of Americans own one. And those who do actively use mobile apps for daily activities. And many of these come with subscription plans. I'm talking about services like games, Netflix, language learning apps, fitness apps, diet or calorie counters, Uber Eats, and home security systems like Ring or Arlo. On top of that, many car companies already offer mobile apps where you can do remote starts. Check on vehicle health, and so forth. But now, automakers are revving it up. You'd think America's love for gadgets and phone apps would translate smoothly to the car industry. But actually, you'll be surprised. So how do Americans feel about this trend? Well, in a nutshell, most Americans don't like it. There was a survey done with 217 people who plan to buy a car in the next two years. Turns out about 75% were unwilling to pay monthly or annual subscription fees for features that historically came included with the car as a standard or even for features that are optional. Only 50% were even aware that car our companies are trying out subscription plans, and only 20% have actually tried some type of automotive subscription. The majority agree that basic comfort and convenience features should be available as a one-time purchase. For example, features like heated and ventilated seats and remote start. The fact remains that most American consumers don't want to pay for either of these types of subscriptions. In fact, Toyota faced a lot of heat around this recently. What happened was, Toyota was letting owners use an app to remotely lock their doors, or for owners of plug-in vehicles to precondition the interior. But as some complimentary subscriptions for remote start come to an end, Toyota owners got an unexpected surprise. They could no longer use their key fob to remotely start their vehicles. Owners had to fork out $8 a month to keep their key fob to work for remote starting, even if they weren't using connected services. But due to so much consumer pushback, ultimately Toyota ended up reconsidering this business model. The survey surfaced even more interesting consumer opinions about car subscription. Only 25% of consumers were willing to subscribe for basic features. 20% were willing to pay up to 35 bucks a month for these features. There was also an unspecified percentage of participants who were willing to pay up to 25 bucks monthly for other features like stolen vehicle tracking, over-the-air performance upgrades, and online service records. Some of these surveys said they would also be willing to pay for over-the-air updates that increase a vehicle's horsepower or torque. But there was only a minuscule 
ideal number, less than 10%, who would pay monthly for enhanced range in an EV. So, the key takeaway is that there are a lot of skeptics. Americans prefer their most wanted car features to be included in the car purchase price, rather than opting for ongoing subscription. They say, why should you pay the car maker even after your car's been paid off? Some feel this is a violation of free and fair property ownership, and they loathe the thought that car makers are just trying to squeeze more out of the consumers. But General Motors completely disagrees. They did their own internal research, and they believe consumers want to bundle car features and monthly subscriptions. GM says their research involved thousands of participants, not a meager 217 people on the survey. So GM is moving full stream ahead with a strategy to increase profits. Now that doesn't shock me, because internal research of a program that makes GM money, of course is going to say people like it. That's like letting the foxes watch the hen house. So now you realize BMW isn't alone with charging for subscriptions. Let's just say subscription plans are becoming a trend in the car world. I'll go into GM in a moment, but let's say even Hyundai's discussing monthly subscription plans for features like heated seats and heated steering wheels. Volkswagen recently introduced a concept car that includes performance features that are only available on demand through a subscription fee. Audi, Cadillac, and Porsche have also dabbled in subscription models for certain features and options too. Ford and Cadillac have since pulled their plug on their car subscription services, but who knows, as the strategy becomes a trend, if they will return to the model. One thing is for sure, BMW, Tesla, and GM are experimenting with the strategy, and there are no signs of slowing down. You probably heard about Tesla Autopilot System. It's an advanced driver assistance system that helps a driver with acceleration, steering, and braking. It also provides collision warnings, emergency braking, and monitoring of blind spots. But if you want to kick it up a notch, there's Full Self-Driving Capability, or FSD. Once you subscribe to FSD, Tesla unlocks scores of more advanced driver assistance features. According to Tesla, they designed FSD to provide drivers with more active guidance and assisted driving under the driver's active supervision. Now, there's actually two ways to subscribe to FSD. You can do it through the Tesla app on your smartphone, or you can log into your Tesla account on your computer browser to purchase a subscription. If you have basic autopilot and you want to upgrade to FSD, you'll need to pay $199 a month. But if you already have enhanced autopilot in your car, a subscription is $99 a month. But what if you subscribe and then later one cancel? Well, you can't get a refund, but you can cancel through the Tesla app via your computer browser if you log into your Tesla account. Tesla also offers subscription plans for connectivity. Actually, all new Teslas come with access to standard connectivity. It's included in your vehicle for eight years for no additional cost. These eight years will start counting down on the first day your vehicle is delivered as new by Tesla or on the first day it's put into service, if it is a service or demonstrator vehicle. With this type of connectivity, you can access most connectivity features like Wi-Fi, including music streaming, basic maps, and navigation through Bluetooth. Then there's premium connectivity. This type of connectivity gives you access to all connectivity features over cellular as well as Wi-Fi. Think things like video streaming, live traffic, visualization, internet browsing, satellite view maps, and so forth. Tesla offers premium connectivity for $9.99 a month plus applicable taxes, or you can opt out for an annual subscription of $99 before taxes. That said, all orders of Model X, Model S, Model Y, and Model 3 vehicles receive a premium connectivity free trial at delivery. Actually, haters can thank Tesla for pioneering microtransactions. Not many Americans now know this, but Tesla used to ship cars with battery packs with driving ranges that were limited by software. Owners had to pay to unlock the full capacity. Let's look at GM. Last year, GM earned more than $2 billion in subscription service revenue. And GM thinks the trend will grow to $25 billion by 2030. If their estimate proves true, this would put GM in the same league as Netflix and Spotify. Right now, GM has 16 million vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. About 4.2 million of them have owners that are paying for subscription services today. That comes out to 25% of their cars. GM's current subscription platform supports services like OnStar, which provides emergency services, in-vehicle security, and even navigation. Besides OnStar, GM also plans to target customers interested in Maps Plus, which is an in-vehicle app-based navigation solution that was rolled out just this past April, and it can be activated with Amazon's Alexa voice control. Last year, the average price of a new car was over $48,000. That brings the average cost of a 60-month Prime Auto loan to almost $820 bucks a month. As it turns out, GM did their own internal research. They found that consumers were willing to pay up to $135 bucks a month on services for their vehicles, according to their study, which I would take with a grain of salt myself. By 2030, GM anticipates they can get additional subscription revenues from 30 million vehicles they plan to roll out, which will come equipped with some form of connected technology. In fact, GM has already stated that in the next three to four years, GM will be rolling out some 50 value-added products and services. There aren't many details about these features yet, but they did say that bigger screens on GM EVs will enable the
the cars to offer more data-oriented software services to drivers and passengers. Most likely it includes entertainment devices like video games or streaming movies or services that use data generated from the vehicle itself. For instance, vehicle maintains scheduling and all systems to coach drivers to help them to drive more efficiently. So what does all this mean? Will this make or break the car industry? From a business standpoint, offering subscription plans could simplify the production of cars. Automakers could really build every car with every available feature. No need to make this trim or that trim. Then the car maker could sell every car for a set price and then collect additional revenue stream continuously as owners pay monthly for various features. That's why major car makers are jumping on the bandwagon because that's where the money's at. But for consumers, the manufacturer's plan is less than ideal. Logic tells you the car price will be higher for consumers if models don't come in different trims, but come with all the features anyway, fully loaded, whether you opt to activate them or not. So what does this mean for consumers? Does it mean that someday no BMW models will ever be offered in different trims? Will all car models just come with all features built in and fully loaded regardless of whether the owners choose to pay and activate them or not? Will this increase car prices? The answer to all these questions is most likely yes. At least that's what logic says. Consider then too how complex and difficult it'll be to determine the value of a car when you resell it. And that's only the beginning of the mess that car subscriptions will create. But now you tell me, are you willing to pay monthly subscriptions for car features in a car you've already paid for? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.